Hello, in this video I'll show you how I make this page. It's got some interesting texture and this is how I make it. First of all, I put some gummed parcel tape down the wrong way round on my pages, which are already gessoed. So I'm gluing down the paper side, not the glue side. The glue is remaining up. I do that on both sides on the edges. See what I mean? That The shiny side is up and that's the side with the glue. And I've also torn the edges so we don't have hard edges on the inside. And I shall trim it in a bit as well. So I'm just doing that on both sides. I'm just using um, just ordinary glue stick to glue it down. Although now I've finished the piece, I've noticed it is pulling away a bit from the paper. So perhaps I'd use something stronger in future like PVA glue. So learn from my mistakes if you try this. Use a stronger glue than just glue stick. So again, that page has rough edges. And as you see, shiny side up. Just pressing it down firmly using a cloth. And I'll go to trim the edges before we do the texture bit. Have you ever seen this done before? I can't remember where I've seen it. I think it might have been Ulrika that did it once. Whoever it was, I stored it away in my head thinking, oh, yes, I can do that. In fact, I have done it on other things. This is the first time I've actually used it to show in a video. The purpose of this video is to create some interesting texture. I end up with a very whimsical page, which is very unlike me, but I do like it. Right, so I've trimmed the edges and now I can apply some gesso. This is just ordinary white gesso. And you'll see the magic happen in a minute. So just apply the gesso on top. Now I don't know if it works with ordinary paint. I know it works with gesso. And it would be best if you could vary the direction of your paint brushes, uh, your paint strokes. I tend to, I have tended to go up and down, basically because it's in long strips. And I've put it on, not too thick and not too thin, <laughs> just right. And can you see on the top left hand corner, it's beginning to crackle. This is a great way to get a lovely crackle effect. Can you see it there? It's just beginning to happen. It takes a few minutes. I just let it dry naturally. I don't know if hastening it with a hairdryer would help or not, but I just let it do its own thing. Because I've learnt before with crackle that it's best to just let it do its own crackling on its own. Can you see it's happening on the right hand side as well now? So I'm going to leave that to dry and then come back. Here I am back with it. All the crackle has happened and it's nice and dry. And now I'm putting some texture on with some spackle. This is Gerstacker um, light modelling paste which I'm just putting through one of my floral stencils. And I'm just do, going to do this all over the two pages. Bit of a mess there, easy to clean that up. Let's do some on this side as well. I'm just going to vary the angles that they're at. Let's get rid of that lumpy bit there. That's better. And I'm going to repeat it on this side as well. This is just a rough stencil that I made. So uh, it is available in my shop, but obviously a better quality version of it is available in my shop. This is one of my prototypes, I think. Now I like those two places, but I think I've got some more. Can you see it shining in the light? It dries fairly quickly. I'm going to put a little bit down at the bottom here. There's a little bit of the flower coming in there. Yes, this a good a good sample of this stencil is available in the shop, my Etsy shop. The link will be down below in case you're interested. A little bit there. I'm going to put a little bit at the top as well. It's coming in on that corner, I think. Now this buckle dries fairly quickly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and have my lunch and come back and it will be ready for the next stage, the fun stage. So you can see it there, lovely. 
Here I am, back from my lunch, and now coming in with some watercolour. Now this colour is Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. It's a beautiful, beautiful dusky purple. I was introduced to it by Yana Valley um, from YouTube. Uh, go find, I'll put a link down below to her channel. She does some beautiful artwork and she was using this colour. She told me about it and I thought, oh yes, that's a beautiful colour. I'm going to buy it. So I did. I very rarely have other, other watercolours to um Windsor and Newton I tend to have but this colour just appealed to me so I've got a couple of uh, Daniel Smiths now in my my little pot so what I'm doing is I'm applying the watercolour loosely and I'm letting it run letting it do its own thing a little bit with a little bit of encouragement here and there darkening some areas particularly around the where it would be darker if it was a plant, like underneath the flower head and around the leaves. And I'm going to do the same on the other page, but this time I'm just going to go in with some water first of all. And then dab the paint in, drop the paint in. I think this is the better method actually. Start off with the wet page and then encourage the paint to move around. Vary the amount of water you have on the brush. That's lovely. So I repeat that a few times actually. Encouraging it to flow around and move. And now I'm putting some more darker areas in again. Because once the watercolour dries, it dries a lot lighter. And I want a bit of depth there. Here and there. I do love this colour. I'm going to dry it with a hairdryer, but obviously I've cut that out. And now I'm applying some pink. This is a White Nights watercolour in one of their pastel shades. And it's a lovely pink, so I'm popping that on as well. Now the page is rather dry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more water and pull the colour around. I don't want it all over, I just want it in some areas. These two colours are so pretty together. It's a very shabby chic look, this page is. It's very unusual for me. But it's what my heart wanted. <laughs> I'm allowing it to flow. I'm putting some on the left hand side now as well. Bring those two pages together. Adding a bit more at the top there. And again, I dry it, but again, I've cut out the hair drying bit. And I'm going to add my focal point, which is a little watercolour of a lady I did um, a couple of weeks ago. So I've been wanting to use in something and I'm going to cut out some flowers for her hair. She's glued down now and I'm going to glue down these. It's a photocopy of some buttons on a ribbon that I made quite a while ago now, last year sometime. And that's going at the bottom. And I was going to put a, another string of buttons at the top, but in the end I decided to go with just one. It looked better, looked more balanced. So there it is. And it's got actually, it's got eyelets, yay, holding it down. And probably a bit of glue as well. And now I'm going to add some words. These are from a Stamperia pad. 
I've just chopped out the words because I like them. And they go well with this page. It says, Wonderland is better when you are completely lost. And I'm just trying to figure out where to place it now. How to place them as well, to have them straight or crooked. And in the end, I decided to put them on the top, actually, where there's that blank space. Up there. They look a lot better there. So I'm just going to glue those down, just with glue stick. And here is my finished page. I really like it. Something very different for me, very feminine, very shabby chic, which I don't tend to you do, but I did enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I hope you enjoy my channel. If you're not a subscriber already, please do subscribe and have a look at some of my past videos. I have quite a few now. I also have links in the description down below to my Etsy shop where I sell stencils mostly and also to my Patreon where you can support this channel if you would like to. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye.